2024 is going to have massive rioting that's going to rival what we saw in 2020. I think a lot of our cities are going to burn, and I think a lot of our institutions are going to be invaded. I think the chaos is going to be like nothing our country has seen before. I think that we are going to have more mass shootings in churches than we've seen before. And I'm asking all my brothers and sisters in all of our churches to be ready for what's coming. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about what I see coming and why I think that. Everything that I'm going to bring to you is based off of my 30 years working in law enforcement in an area that had lots of protests and riots. You have to remember that history is a predictor of the future, and we only need to see what has happened in our past to understand what is in our future and pay attention to the warning signs that are out there already. Now, I want to welcome you to Christian Warrior Training. My name is Keith. Do me a favor and hit that like button. Why? Because hitting the like button allows me to buy toys like this. Hitting that like button, hitting comment, hitting subscribe tells the algorithm that this should be shown to more people, which gets more views. And all of that, if I actually get to stay monetized, then by being monetized, it allows me to buy things like this without impacting my family budget because I can't buy this through the family budget, but I can with social media money. So if you hate the censorship of YouTube, fight back and hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Lots of you watch the co content here, but never hit that subscribe button. Show me some love. I'd appreciate it. All right. All you need to do is look at how the federal government is becoming irrelevant minute by minute. If you look at what's occurring in Texas right now, where... Texas has kicked out the federal government for the most part out of a certain area to take a stand and to stop people from immigrating illegally into America. It shows you that the federal government is incapable of functioning properly. We saw that years ago in California when California did the opposite of Texas, became a sanctuary state and penalized police officers that try to work with immigration and customs. They were the first to show that the federal government is becoming irrelevant. So as the federal government's authority erodes, then so too does our society. We have a contentious election coming up. This election is gonna cause a lot of chaos in our country. Why? Because our last several elections have been chaotic and have caused riots because of the same people. Right or wrong, we know that that's gonna happen again. Why? Because we look at these Palestinian protests that are occurring right now, I like to call them the Hamas riots. They are actually doing after action reviews, meaning the left, they're doing, they're going out and causing riots and then writing after action reports, just like the police and just like the military does after an incident to find out what works and what doesn't. They look at what propaganda that they put out that drew more people, they look at how the police responded, how the government responded, and then they're making tweaks on that. They're funded by offshore accounts, by foreign governments to sow chaos in America, which is only fair we do the same thing to them. And so we're going to see, we already see it. We know it's coming. If you talk to a lot of the cops out there on the street, they'd love to talk to you. They are good people. They'll tell you what's going on. When we look at the election coming up, we know that Donald Trump is going to win the Republican nomination. That is going to drive leftists crazy. Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President and they're going to start protesting everywhere he goes and everything he does. He's not going to be able to make a move later on in the year without them creating some kind of chaos. Joe Biden is not going to get selected. It's going to be somebody else implemented from the left. And when they actually have their conventions and they move their people forward, I personally believe that that's when a lot of the rioting is going to start or the protests. I think that come November after the elections, we know that nobody has trust in the election system. We saw that last year, the year before. Go all the way back to Bush. They have been contentious every single year. Nobody's going to accept what's going to happen here. And they're going to start rioting because that's their excuse. Now, throw in there some incident where the police might be involved in and something happens and that's just going to spark even more issues. And then we know that the FBI warned us that there are people entering the country illegally. They're going to do active shooter incidents at churches. They've told us it's coming. I've told you it's coming. We know it's coming. 
Why are we not preparing? There are still churches without security teams. In this episode, I've laid out the groundwork that we're going to have massive civil unrest that is coming. What's going to happen in January when we're supposed to install a president, but nobody accepts the election? And then what about all the bad actors around the world? Iran, North Korea, Russia, China. What? Their perfect time to make a move is when our country is in chaos over the elections. Let's worry about our churches. Let's get our churches squared away so we can protect our people because what's going to happen when it all falls apart? People are going to turn to one of two places. They're going to turn to their government, which is going to be falling apart, or they turn to their church. When they turn to the church, are you going to be ready? Is your church ready for what's coming? Now, look, when we have this massive unrest, churches are going to be used as sanctuaries. In my weekly newsletter, my crime watch that I put out, where I talk about all the crime that occurs in churches the week before, there is always criminals that go to a church to find sanctuary. Even the most lowly criminal knows a church is a safe haven, or they believe a church is a safe haven. Is your church that safe haven? Are you prepared? If you're in an urban environment that is going to have rioting like this, what have you done to protect your church to make sure it does not get burned, looted, or something else bad happening to it? What What preparations have you done? Have you done in operations order ahead of time to say if this happens is what we're going to do for our church to make sure it stays secure. What about you people in a suburban area or a rural area? What have you done for your church? Your church is going to be used as a sanctuary. People are going to go to you to look for support and solace. But we also know that there's increased threats to our churches because that's what the government has told us, which we knew anyways. And for the government to actually come out and say it, then we know they're saying it solely to cover their butts because they know it's going to happen and they want to be able to say, at least we said something. So are you ready for those active shooters? I just put up a video about an active shooter in Turkey. And in that, I talked about how that active shooting incident can show us what's going to happen in the United States to our churches and what we should do to be prepared prepared for those types of things. The biggest thing that you can do for your church to prepare is to understand the threat landscape of where you're at right now. I did a prior article on doing an area study of your church to look at what you can do to secure your church to make sure you keep it safe. What are the threats around you? What what, what kind of issues do you have? Is an example, one of our churches, one of our campuses has a very large Somali community in the thousands that we are somewhat concerned about because they don't really like talking to outsiders. And that makes us a little nervous. You want to develop a security plan. Now, that security plan is going to lay out steps that if there is civil unrest in our community, this is what our church is going to do to protect the church and to protect our members, our church members. It can also be what we're going to do to actually protect the actual building and the structure and the contents within. So once you have a security plan in place, you also wanna engage with the community. Go out and reach out to neighboring churches for so you can rely on each other for mutual aid and assistance if need be, but also reaching out and talking to law enforcement in the area to find out what their capabilities are and what your capabilities are so you can rely on each other when the time comes. You also need some kind of crisis management and response in place. You want to prepare for different scenarios of civil unrest and you want to talk about communication within the church and outside of the church if that time comes. You need to take these proactive measures to protect your church but also to protect the people that are going to come to you for safety and solace from the chaos that's going on outside. Our role as a church is to reach, teach, and equip. Reach new Christians and reach current Christians to teach them about God's word and to equip them to go out and do the same. But at the same point, I also kind of look at it as we need to equip everybody to be safe. We can't do that if our church is burning, looted, or ransacked. The biggest step that you can take is have a security team and pick a security team leader that has experience in these matters to keep your church safe. You want to keep your church open when there is this, if there is a rioting going on all over your city and your church is in the middle of it, you want your church to be open so people can come and find Christ, worship God and be safe. If you can't open because your church burned down, then you can't reach, teach and equip. I don't want to be an alarmist, but I actually had lunch with my pastor today and I talked about one to do something like this. And he encouraged me saying, it's important that we should do this. And I agree. I don't want to make people scared. I just want you to be aware that bad times are coming. We all know that. We all feel it, right? Plus the Bible tells us that these times are coming. So if we know it's coming, why haven't we prepared? Start with your security team and start securing your church so that you can be open in that time of crisis. That's all I got for now. Remember your ABCs. Always be caring.